Okay everybody, today I'm going to be showing you something that I call the pressureless balloon. A balloon that you can blow up, expand, inflate, and then even if you untie it, it doesn't deflate. So normally when you blow up a balloon, the inside of the balloon has a higher pressure than the outside of the balloon. That's because the elasticity of the balloon is compressing the air inside, so the air inside has a higher pressure. So that when you release it, the compressed air wants to get out and so it comes out the hole. That's why when you release balloons, they become mini rockets. Well, today we're going to be doing the impossible, the pressureless balloon. Okay, so I have a balloon in this glass bottle here. So the opening of the balloon is such that I can blow into it and inflate the balloon. If I let it go, the air comes out. But if we perform some magic physics on this bottle, when I let go of my mouth from the balloon, the air will not come out. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> it didn't deflate. Okay, so look at this. The balloon is totally open, but there's no air coming out of it. And if you don't believe me that there's not anything blocking the air from coming out, let me pour some water in it. And then even pour the water back out. And you know this is a big hole here. I mean, I can just get a paintbrush and stick it in here and it's fine. So how is it that the air is not coming out of this balloon? How was it that when I blew it up and then let go, the air pressure actually stayed inside of the balloon? So think about it this way. In order for the balloon to not deflate, that means that the air pressure inside of the balloon has to be the same pressure as the air pressure outside of the balloon. So that means the inside of the balloon was at atmospheric pressure. But I told you before that a balloon is under pressure because of the elasticity of the balloon compressing it down, it has a higher pressure. So how is it that this balloon ended up having the same pressure as the atmospheric pressure? Well, what you may or may not have seen is what I was doing to the back of it. So watch what happens when I blow it up. And when I put in the stopper in the back now, it means that in order for this to deflate, it would have to decrease the volume. But I plugged up the back here, so the, in order to decrease the volume, that would mean that the air pressure on the outside of the balloon, but inside of the jar, would have to be at a vacuum or a lower pressure than atmospheric pressure. And so what's actually happening when I plug the back of the balloon is it stops the balloon from deflating. And so we know for sure that the inside of the balloon is now at atmospheric pressure. But where did that energy from the elasticity of the balloon go? Well, what it did is it went into creating a slight vacuum inside of the glass chamber here. And so the elasticity of the balloon is wanting to compress it down. So basically, instead of using the elasticity of the balloon to deflate the balloon, we're using it to create a tiny vacuum inside of this uh, glass jar here. But now, as soon as we release this stopper, the elasticity of the balloon still wants to suck in that air. And as it sucks in the air, it has to decrease the volume of the inside of the balloon. So here's what happens when we release it. And what's cool about this is it actually shows you how you can inflate a balloon without ever blowing into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck on the back of it here and I'm going to decrease the pressure in the bulb here. And in, because the pressure is decreased, air is going to come into the balloon and inflate it. But the air rushing in is just going to still be at atmospheric pressure, the same as outside of the balloon. But the inside of the bulb was the thing that's going to be at a slight vacuum. Okay, inflating a balloon without any pressure. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we did it. So now there is no pressure inside this balloon right now. It's at atmospheric pressure. The same pressure as the air in here is the balloon in there. 
You can see that because no air is escaping out of the balloon. But there still is some stored energy here and that stored energy now is in the bulb. And so when I let the air back in, it's gonna blow the air out of the balloon. So you, so you still can do work with it. And this is actually the same way that our lungs work. So for example, if you picture this balloon as our lungs and the bulb as our chest cavity, and then this syringe as our diaphragm, you can see that we can breathe in and out by moving our diaphragm. But our mouth can stay open. So basically we can move air in and out of our lungs just by changing the pressure in our chest cavity from moving our diaphragm here. Now you can tell that we've created a vacuum here because watch how much volume I have in my syringe here versus the volume in my balloon. So when I've fully inflated my syringe, I only have that tiny amount of volume in my balloon there. So that means this is at a vacuum and you can see that because when I release it, the atmospheric pressure just pushes it back in. So you can see you have to keep applying a force to this. And the energy that I'm pulling against is basically the elasticity of the balloon there. All right, so there you go. That is how you make a pressureless balloon. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And if you haven't checked out the Action Lab subscription box yet, go check it out right now. And what it is, is I've teamed up with the creators of the Curiosity Box to make an experimental box similar to the experiments that you see me do on my channel. And it'll be shipped out four times per year. The very first box that we've come out with is a vacuum chamber box, and it's pretty cool. So basically you get your own mini vacuum chamber where you can do all the vacuum chamber experiments that you've seen me do. And if you haven't subscribed to the Action Lab yet, hit that subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.